Welcome to the stage, self-disciplined strategist, Mr. Rory Vaden. philosophy on success is you only have to work a half a day. You can work either the first 12 hours or the second 12 hours. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's, it's and, and here's a distinction too to understand. Self-discipline isn't just about doing, it's not about making life as hard as possible. It's about doing the hard parts of things as soon as possible. There's an important, an important distinction there. The whole mystery here, the, the whole weird dynamic, it's, it's very contra-culture. It's very different from the world that we live in. And I, I think this relates to why my mother used to always tell me that gifts come in mysterious ways. As a child, I loved the volume library. Uh, the volume library was this set of encyclopedia type reference books that mom had bought for me. And it helped me with 40 different school subjects. And I loved it growing up because it had math and science and naked people. <laughs> but what does it really mean to sacrifice? I mean, if I give you a dollar, does that count as a sacrifice? Or what if Bill Gates gives you a dollar? Is that really a sacrifice? Well, as I said, she used to tell me gifts come in mysterious ways, and it's, it's sort of ironic, I suppose, that in college, when I grew up to work for Southwestern, the books that I was selling, it, they were called the Volume Library. It was the exact same set of books that my mom got for me growing up. She bought them from a college student who came and knocked on her door. And so I, it turns out that I am selling these books. Um, and in college, I'll, I'll never forget, it was July 26th, 2001, which was my 19th birthday. And I'll save you from doing the math. I'm 28 years old, okay? But it was, it was my 19th birthday, and I, I remember so vividly what it felt like to fail. Because I was out running around in the neighborhoods and knock, knock. We don't want any. Slam. Knock, knock. We're not interested. Slam. Knock, knock, you're ugly. Now wait just a minute. I realized they were probably looking at me going, why is Chachi from Happy Days? <laughs> it got harder though as the day went on. It, it, it had been raining the entire morning. I had, been, I had yet to get into a single door. And just after lunch, I knocked on this door and a high school student answered. And I don't know why this happened, but this is what really broke me because I, I knocked on the door and this kid answered and he was like, dude, bro, this is your summer job? Why don't you get a real job, you loser? And, and in a split second, that kid thought that I was some kind of a dork. Usually it takes people hours to figure that out. But that moment I just broke. And it's so crazy how in your life, isn't it true that it's always like one little thing that uh, unexpected that breaks us where, where we've just, we've had enough. And I have to tell you, I, at that moment I, I went off and I remember sitting down on this curb. And I was in Montgomery, Alabama about 1,200 miles from home. And I was sitting there on the corner of Buckingham Lane and Coral Court. And I was realizing that for the first time in my life, I was really failing. And there's something about being in this moment you know, 1,200 miles away from home where everything you have leaves you, every, everything you've ever been, everything that you've ever done, and it's, you're, you're stripped of everything and it's just a chance for you to meet your character. And I was sitting there realizing that I hated my job. I wanted to quit. I wanted to go home. And folks, you know things are bad when you want to go back to Frederick. 
but for you in your life, in your business. Have you ever been sitting here on the corner of Buckingham Lane and, and Coral Court or, or whatever it is that your version looked like? Yeah, maybe, maybe it wasn't a job thing. Maybe it was a, a health struggle or maybe it was some financial battle or, or something with your family. But I think sooner or later, every single person in this room is gonna end up right here. And in this moment, a decision has to be made. A choice. A choice about whether or not we're gonna be like everybody else and we're gonna create some excuse, some rationalization, some justification to, to give up our dreams, our hopes, the things that matter the most to us. If we're going to quit or if in that moment, are you going to be the kind of person that gets up and knocks on another door? And it is an interesting truth that success is almost always one more step beyond that breaking point. You see, a little while later, I, I knocked on this door and a guy in a wheelchair answered uh, named Lenny Jacobs. And rather than slam the door on me, Lenny actually invited me in. And he, he looked at me and he said, you're selling kids books, huh? Well, come on in and talk to my assistant Lupe for a minute. I have to, I have to grab something. And so I went in and I started, he went off to get whatever. And I, I started talking to this woman and the strangest thing happened. I actually started crying in front of a total stranger. I just, it's been raining and <laughs> this kid made fun of me and it's my birthday. And, and Lupe looked at me. Her eyes were so soft. And I will never forget what this woman said. No hablo inglés. <laughs> it wasn't funny then. <laughs> but it's sort of a truth about life that things often get worse before they get better. Isn't that true? Well, a little while later, I, they didn't buy, obviously. A little while later, I, I knocked on this door and this very uh, sort of poor, uh, disheveled single mother answered. And standing next to her was the cutest five-year-old boy. And this little boy, he, he had dirt on his face and he spoke with a little bit of a lift but he was so cute. I mean, he was just smiling from ear to ear. And this little boy loved the books. He, I mean, he wanted them so bad, but there was no way. I mean, $300 to this family. I mean, there was just no way this family was gonna have this money. And well, his mom practically begged me to give them the, the summer to save up. And she said, well, come back at the end of the summer and, and, and I promise that we'll have the, the money for you. And I had sort of a soft spot in my heart for this kid. And, and, and so I, I made a deal with him and I said, all right, I, I'll tell you what, little buddy, I, I promise that I will save you a set of books and, and I will come back at the end of the summer if you promise to save all of your money up and, and keep it in this little envelope for me. And he called me Mr. Bookman. And so I signed this envelope, Mr. Bookman, and I handed it to him and he was excited, right? He was like, yeah, Mr. Bookman, I'll save for him. I'll get lots of money, I promise. So cute. And so I just, I left the house. And to be honest, when it, three months later, when it came time to deliver the books to this family, I had totally forgotten about them. I don't know if you ever have that with your customers. Like you see so many people and I, I just had, I'd forgotten about them. And anyways, it came the day that I was supposed to deliver. And when I pulled up to their house, I remember seeing this, this beat up, broken down pickup truck in the yard. And you could, you could hear the hum of the refrigerator because... It was on the porch and, and there was this horrible stench, almost like urine. And, and I walked up to this house and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? There's no way this family's going to have this money. I, I, there's a better chance of an Amish family pulling up in a Hummer. <laughs> but I made a promise to this little kid, right? So and you know how that goes, right? You make a promise. So Anyways, I, I go up to the house and I go to knock and I hear him from inside. He's like, mom, it's Mr. Bookman. He, he came back. 
and he runs outside, he grabs me by the arm, and he pulls me into the house where I, I walked past his mom who was on the couch in a hospital gown. And immediately I knew things had gone from bad to worse. And this little boy's smile suddenly turned to tears. So he came up to me with the envelope in his hand. And he said, I had it for you, bookman. I had all of it. But mommy needed help. And it turns out that with the help of his nine-year-old sister, this, this little boy had mowed lawns, he had sold lemonade, he had even sold some of his very own baseball cards, and he had saved up every single dollar for those books. And then his mom got sick, and I mean, you know the rest of the story. I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was, I was 19 years old at the time, and so I, I, I gave him a, a big, giant hug, and then I just left. And as I drove around the block, I thought about the lesson that I had just learned from a five-year-old. It's a lesson that they don't teach in schools. You can't read about it in the volume library, and, and you certainly won't see it in a magazine at the checkout counter. And so I did what anybody would do. I, I did what you would have done. The company had sent us some extra books, and so I went back to the house, and on this little sticky note, I remember writing... Gifts come in mysterious ways. Love, Mr. Bookman. I set the books on the door. I rang the doorbell, or on the porch. I, I rang the doorbell, and I just walked away. And for so long, in my ignorance, I actually thought that I was the one who gave the gift to that kid. Until here recently, I realized that actually he was the one that gave the gift to me. Because he taught me something that nobody ever talks about. He taught me the secret of sacrifice. Folks, the secret of sacrifice is this. It's the person who makes the sacrifice that gets the gift. That's why gifts come in mysterious ways. And that is one of the ultimate truths and paradoxes of self-discipline that creates this conflicting culture about the way the world tells us to live and the way that the world actually works. And I'm the first person that loses sight of that. And whenever I do, you know what I think about? I think about that little boy that I met selling books. It's funny because after all these years, I've kept his original envelope. You can still see the faded letters where it says, Bookman. And it reminds me of the mystery I learned from a five-year-old, that the person who makes the sacrifice gets the gift. So the next time you're in front of a set of escalators and some stairs, take the stairs.